Good morning, bonjour, and welcome to another Wine Steward video. My name is Jim, and you are once again visiting in video form via the miracle of video, a uh, really lovely place in downtown Pleasanton called the Wine Steward. Been there lately? You gotta come in. <laughs> we miss you. At any rate, let me have a sip, wet my whistle. Oh, that's lovely. And get going with this week's video, telling you about what's going on around here, what we're doing at the wine bar, what we're offering uh, that's new and interesting and delicious. And uh, sometimes we're reminding you of things that we've been bringing to you for quite a while, including these beautiful Marcona almonds. We get, oh, how big are they? They are five kilogram, therefore over 10 pound packs shrink wrapped from Spain of raw Marcona almonds. We roast them in house and dress them up with olive oil and salt and to half of them we add smoked paprika it doesn't make them hot but it gives them a nice warmth of spice and to the other half of the batch we apply herbs to provence i know that doesn't sound very spanish but they have the same dog on herbs in spain and there's probably another name for it there anyway these are very very good almonds uh, the olive oil flavor uh, coating these things and this little bit of salt. I didn't overdo it and uh, the, the flavors are just lovely. The the bite on a Marcona almond is so much different from the almonds. The type of almond that we grow here in California that's uh, prevalent is, uh, I won't say inferior, but quite different and drier in, um, in flavor and body, in texture than a more buttery, uh, buttery textured Marcona almond from España grown nearly exclusively in Spain. We don't grow them here, I don't believe. Anyway, get in on these. That's just a reminder of our doing that kind of thing for you. Let's put this up here to announce that this is part of our wine bar menu. The brand new wine bar menu is published. We always offer a couple of wines by the glass only so that you can fully know that wine. Yes, there's plenty of tasting to be done, but there's always two wines that are served only by the glass so that you, with that grander commitment to the wine can more fully know the wine. I think I already said that, but I think it's worth repeating. This is gorgeous. It's a brand new vintage of an old friend, Roger Perrin. Par, uh, he's, uh, well, he's passed away, but his family is still making wine in the northern part of Chateauneuf-du-Pape, near the city town of Orange. And you can visit there if you want, but you can visit there sooner by having a glass of this wine. I've always thought that a great glass of wine is a journey somewhere. Um, when you can't necessarily afford the plane ticket or when the calendar doesn't permit. So get in on this and take a trip to chateauneuf de pop for this beautiful seven grape blend. Yes, of course, Grenache, Syrah, Moved are the headliners in this blend, but you've got other interesting things too. You know, you can do 13 or more grape varieties in a chateauneuf de pop by local wine law. And uh, they go, well, at least halfway there, don't they? With Roger Perrin, Domaine Roger Perrin, chateauneuf de pop offered by the glass on our wine bar. It's the new 2020 vintage. I can vouch for it. I've had some and it's delicious. Also on the wine bar this week, I'm not gonna mention everything because I'd rather tell you about something else we're doing, but let's just tell you about two wines that we showed the class last night at Las Positas College. The Wines of the Old World class was shown wines from Champagne, from Limoux. Do you know where Limoux is? It's way down there in the south of France and the Loire Valley. In fact, we pretty much focused on the Loire Valley with four different wine experiences. Three of them were white. And this Sancerre was certainly something you would want to offer in a class on the Loire Valley. Sancerre is in the Eastern Loire. Uh, remember this river uh, valley wine region stretches about 300 miles east to west to the Atlantic Ocean. And um, this is on the east side. Sancerre, of course, nearly all of us have heard of it. Many of us love it. Uh, those who don't love it simply haven't had it yet. And right across the river from there is something harder to pronounce, but worthy of your attention too. So if you're afraid to come in here and ask for a Puy Fumé, we understand, but we also have some Puy Fumé over there in the Loire Valley section. Uh, in the meantime, this is a great one imported by uh, Charles Neal. And Charles has decided to throw in the towel and sell his business to uh, one of his wine wraps. And so it won't be saying Charles Neal on the back much longer, but in the meantime, we will still be able to access this beautiful Domaine d'Aulnay Sancerre made entirely of Sauvignon Blanc, grown in a mixture of gravel and limestone and Silex. Silex, what is that? Silex is the name, another name for flint. So there's a very uh, 
there's very silexy soil in certain parts of Sancerre. Speaking of silex, here comes another Loire Valley white wine featured on the white wine tasting flight. This comes from a little west of Sancerre, actually quite a ways west. We are going down the Loire River to visit a place called Vouvray. Vouvray is per perhaps the world's most famous place for the grape Chenin Blanc, which I often call the best grape in the world, just to start a conversation about a formerly maligned grape. Those of us who remember grandma drinking Chenin Blanc uh, in large format form, perhaps with a handle on it. And uh, that wine coming from the Central Valley of California was sweet and uh, a little yucky perhaps, but Chenin Blanc is in fact worthy of our attention. That's why I want to start a conversation by calling it the best grape in the world. And every time you see it on the menu, it is identified as such, just so you'll say, hey, you guys, why are you calling it that? And then you taste this and you're starting to understand. Chenin Blanc from Vouvray can be done as a dry wine, such as this, or a slightly sweet wine, or a very, very sweet wine called Moulieu, and it can be done as a fantastic sparkling wine as well. Sparkling Vouvray is gorgeous. I don't have one right now, but I'm always looking out for them. But this ain't bad either. This is called um, Domaine Gilet Cuvée Silex, because this particular Chenin Blanc plot is ridden with the flint soil, and we feel like you can enjoy that minerality in, on your palate, that this dry wine, which does have a bit of lemon curd and green apple, also has this sense of uh, enlivening minerality. It's lovely stuff. Check it out. You don't have to come to the wine bar to get it either. It's on the shelf right over there, so visit it that way if you'd like. So, um, intermission, just to say that we have a couple of events coming up that uh, you should be looking for on thewinesteward.com under the Experiences heading. And uh, the first one to tell you about is a walk-around experience. In other words, uh, our next event will employ both floors of this big store, formerly movie theater, and uh, why not use all this square footage to put, let's say, 75 of you in here to visit five or six different tasting stations, all featuring Spain. Yes, we're gonna have a Spanish walk around, and what's the best way to enhance that? To have Eric Edgar out there in the alcove preparing a couple massive paellas for us to enjoy. Maybe I'll make tortilla española, maybe we'll do pan con tomate, we'll show off some of our other Spanish groceries, like perhaps those Marcona almonds I just told you about, and we will enjoy Spain, 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 and Spain, upstairs and downstairs, in walk-around style and hopefully sell you a whole bunch of great Spanish wine. So anticipate that. I believe it's gonna happen on the second Sunday of March. This is just like a, a preliminary warning, an alert, uh, without a lot of information yet. But uh, pretty soon you'll be seeing that offered on thewinesteward.com and you'll be able to sign up the first 75 of you. Yes, yeah, 75 instead of what, 28? Like we usually see it upstairs because this uh, square footage can handle you. And we'd love to see a nice group of you enjoying one of our favorite wine types, meaning Vinos de España. All right, I told you about that event. Let's just make a brief allusion to an event that's gonna happen soon thereafter. We're gonna have none other than the son of Kermit Lynch here. Anthony Lynch is now extremely active in the business founded by his father, Kermit Lynch. Kermit's still around, but Anthony's doing a heck of a lot more of the work now. Going to France, coming back with uh, new wines to show us, and uh, Daniel Madero, Anthony Lynch, and myself will probably be having a nice conversation with glasses of wine in our hand. Um, and remembering once in a while to pour you some. <laughs> we'll be uh, basically taking a delicious tour of France. All wines found by Kermit Lynch or more recently by his son, Anthony Lynch. How cool. <sighs> hmm, that's not one of them, but it's pretty damn good. Maybe I'll tell you what it is later. Hey, I forgot to tell you about this. Look at that. This is one of the best, perhaps it is the best frozen pizza I've ever had. Yes, you can easily access frozen pizza down the street at the grocery store, but this is actually made in Italy. It is hand stretched. It is uh, naturally leavened for 24 hours and apparently most of those grocery store types are not. So head for the freezer case and have what I would call the best or most authentic tasting uh, pizza I've ever had out of a frozen case. And it is um, a really identifiably great crust. I mean, you're gonna say, I, ah, I've been waiting to have this from a frozen pizza and I didn't know it existed. Anyway, we have these at the wine store, check them out. Now, finally, let's tell you about this thing. 
I haven't done this in a while. The wine steward, it doesn't even show up here very well. We haven't offered you a sampler in a long time, a themed uh, collection of wines to buy as a group and spend a little a bit less money by committing to all six bottles at one time. These are all recent wines found, uh, uh, recently tasted and identified as great wines from where? France, hence the get up, okay? And we want to first remind you of something we told you about last week as the first wine in this sampler. Uh, this is a 2014 Bordeaux, so it's from the left bank. It's based on Cabernet. It has a sizable amount of Petit Verdot, and then a nice chunk of Merlot is in there. This is Chateau Valentin, and it is 2014, as I said, so it shows you development. And yet, 2014 wasn't necessarily thought to be a great year. I wonder if it's the presence of all that Petit Verdot in there that makes the difference here. This is really lovely phase two wine. Phase two meaning, yes, there's still fruit, and the savories now, because the fruit is coming down, are rising to uh, be stars on the stage. Savories meaning like uh, wet tobacco and leather um, and, and earth and cassis. Anyway, you've got fruit and savories going on in this beautiful wine that you should save for a upcoming rainy night. I'm sure we still have a few of those on the calendar out there and we are uh, blessed to have rain, aren't we? Uh, we're blessed to have this Bordeaux along with a rainy night with a big chunk of meat and some root vegetables and perhaps mushrooms. It's, I say this a lot, but that's what you do with Bordeaux and when you drink it. Cold rainy nights, not hot summer days, all right? Chateau Valentin is in the sampler. Wine number two, look at this. What a freaking beautiful label. I love this label, I love this wine. You know, I really enjoy good Beaujolais. And this Cote de Brie is a beautiful Beaujolais, especially for the price. I mean, I think we're in the mid twenties here for a, not just beautiful bottle, but a beautiful glass and bottle of Gamay, the Gamay grape as featured from Cote de Bourri. Bourri is uh, one of the 10 crews of Beaujolais. And this is our most recent entry from that beautiful place that's a nice answer to the rising prices of Burgundy to the north. Burgundy, red Burgundy now, you have to pay a heck of a lot more for an effect like this. Uh, in, and I, I equate the two because they're both uh, not necessarily the biggest wines in the world, but they are profound aromatically and uh, beautiful with food. Again, let's, let's say what it should go with. How about sausages off the grill in the summertime if you're uh, putting a slight chill on this or of course Thanksgiving dinner. This is very versatile red wine. So try it with pork roast. It, it's just beautifully perfumed and medium bodied and gorgeous. I can't say enough about this beautiful Gamay from Côte de Bourri in Beaujolais Francais. All right, uh, hey, this is cool. This is from the Terrasse de Larzac. You may have heard me talk about Terrasse de Larzac before as an inland part of that vast wine lake called the Languedoc. Languedoc in the south of France is the largest wine region in France. Um, it's so large it has very significant subregions within it like Corbiere and such, but this is an area not talked about as much until of late. Uh, because, well, for one thing, the wine steward's been showing you several wines from Terrasse de Larzac. This is one of the best values I've ever had from there. This is from the uh, producer Mas Damil, and it is their bottling called Le Petit Tou, and it's gonna consist of Syrah and Carignan and Grenache, I believe. It's a beautiful answer to the Rhone wines, uh, which are grown and made just a little east of here. So it acts like a Rhone wine, but it's a little higher up in elevation, a little more mineral effect. Very good stuff. What else do we have? Ah, let's go to the Rhone. So this is from our Chateauneuf de Pop friends, uh, Pego, and uh, yet we can't always afford to be buying 98 point uh, scored Pego every day. It's uh, reaching nearly $100 in some vintages. So why not drink their Cote de Rhone instead? This is their uh, Maclure. I don't know why it's called that, but this is their Cote de Rhone, and it's grown right next to Chateauneuf de Pop. It has very Chateauneuf de Pop quality and styling. It's a Grenache Syrah Mauved, and there's also 10% of a grape called Senso in here. And Senso may just be the answer to the fact that it's heating up around here. It's already a very warm place that delivers higher alcohol wines. And how can you alleviate? You can add Senso. Senso is kind of a, uh, a, a more light on its feet a red grape. So blend in a little bit of that and bring the wine back into balance is the theory here. And I've seen several other Southern Rhone people doing the same thing. So I believe it is uh, identified as a solution uh, to the warming up of Chateauneuf de Pop. At any rate, beautiful Cote de Rhone, more in the traditional style, the style I like instead of being a fruit bomb, beautiful stuff. Here's another wine. This is from uh, another wine region of that vast area called the Languedoc I was alluding to earlier. 
uh, within the Languedoc, you also have this place, which is almost in Spain, called Minafoi. Minafoi is simply the name of a village and a wine region surrounding it. And here is yet another wine that I believe is using Syrah, Carignan, those southern French red grapes. This has some jazzy stuff, like energy in the nose, some lift and some density. It's a really fun, like, two-act wine uh, in that there's an almost citric quality that, that keeps you thirsty while you're drinking it, and there's a very satisfying mouthfeel uh, happening here too. So this beautiful wine called Coupe Rose, uh, Chateau Coupe Rose uh, from Minervois. Get to know it, and it's in the sampler. This sampler, by the way, costs about $150 or less for six very, very good French wines. Let's tell you about the last one here. This is Chateau Uning, a rather unusual name. It doesn't sound very French. It may actually be Greek. They have found evidence of Greek winemaking here, like going back thousands of years in this part of the south of France that is now included in the Rhone Valley. The, the Rhone Valley map didn't used to include this area called Ventoux, uh, but now Ventoux, which is on the other side of the Dantel de Montmirail, is uh, properly included in the Rhone. We can call this a Rhone wine now. It always was a Rhone wine, but now it's, now it's valid, uh, according to those who have to write draw maps. <laughs> Chateau Unang, I got to go there once with some friends, and uh, I love the place. It is a place that not as many people visit because they're all heading to Chateauneuf de Pop and Gigonus and such, and they might not drive just a little further to get here to the Ventoux. There is a winery up the road from here. I will not name them. I will not disparage them. I will say that they make glorious wines, but they cost three times as much as this starting price. And this is easily as good. So let's not name that name, but let's just tell you that we identified beautiful value here in the form of Chateau Onang, La Source. Let me tell you what I feel like I'm getting in one wine. I feel like I'm getting two parts of the Rhone in one red wine. It acts somewhat like a Northern Rhone red wine with the mysterious nose of meat and uh, dark, dark fruit and pepper. And it also has <clears throat> the Kirschy quality of a Southern Rhone red that's based on Grenache. There is in fact Syrah and Grenache happening in La Source, the, this particular bottling from Unang. Beautiful wine, well under $30. It's part of the sampler. It will be even cheaper uh, for you if you commit to all six bottles. How about that? We'll give you a little extra discount price uh, for uh, collecting all six. Thank you so much for watching these videos. Thank you very much for your patronage. Let's see you upstairs at the mez on the mezzanine soon to enjoy some beautiful wines. And uh, then you can hop downstairs and do some shopping and go home and cook and have wonderful sips all evening long. And perhaps much some Marcona almonds along the way. Thank you again, and we will see you soon at the Wine Steward.